it's friday let's get to the news let's blast off let's do the dang thing you already know what it is let's get started let's get it popping okay hogwatch time jd vance is insanely unpopular but did he fuck a couch or a dolphin we dive in kamala on israel does she go left enough um what else oh paris olympics drama jd to deep vans was she cryptically tweeting like he got that vp pick i hope that'd be so sick um yeah we're gonna do the jd vance a lot today because he is unimaginably rizless and i fucking told you this shit dude i told you he was so shit he was bad he was so shit but he's real he's real 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 fucking bad dude it's awesome anyway do we have a blast off meme or what okay that's a great blast off meme okay i'm gonna use the jesus one and be sacrilegious okay she go left enough does she go left enough paris olympics drama Chapo son arrested and more DreamCon in Austin tomorrow for Creator League Supreme. Praise to the Chapo Trap House family. Wait, what happened? Oh, oh my God. Because you said the Chapo son. El Mayo and Chapo son. El Mayo is more dangerous and worth 10 billion, by the way. I know, I know, I know. Okay, you know what? I'm going to put El Mayo in the fucking tweet as well. God damn you. Actually, I'm not because I don't have enough space left. All right. Boom. It's true. JD stands for Jorkin the penis. Yeah, Jorkin the penis inside of a couch. El mayonnaise. Okay, here. Here, we're blasting off. Boys, girls, MBs. Let's go. Let's freaking go, baby. Let's freaking go, baby. All right. Here it is. I bet Republicans are re getting that abortion stance. Having to take JD to term and not being able to abort. Ooh, that's a funny meme. That's a good line. I like that. Yeah. Um, I was halfway done with the Chapo app. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Stavi app, and now it's gone. Bro, just because we fucked, like, like YouTube should, YouTube should allow us to fuck. Like, uh, how, when are you going to see a Turkish man and a Greek god have sex like that on camera? It was for educational purposes. It was honestly, it was for educational purposes. It was for geopolitical purposes. Like we were uniting the two nations as we united our penis tips with one another. Docking is fairly easy. Docking is fairly easy when like, obviously the Stavi baby is not circed up and he's got that Greek Orthodox shit. You know what I mean? I'm circed up as a Muslim boy, but he's not. I wonder why it probably got fucking mass reported. That's so lame. I'm going to text him right now and see what's up. You know what? I'm going to call him right now, actually. Fuck it. Let's see if he picks up. Wait, which phone number is it? I don't know which one the new one is. Wait, hold on. Freaking famous people, bro. They get new. They get new fucking. They get new numbers every week. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Uh, I think it's this one. All right, let me call this motherfucker. See what's up. Call Eldis. I don't have Eldis's number. Eldis is a handsome lad. Hello. I'm, I'm live right now and people can hear you just so you know so don't say anything crazy okay okay um, i shouldn't say the slurs you were texting earlier yeah yeah yeah. like i i well i was texting you the slurs to not say them <laughs> i was like hey these are your favorite slurs please don't say them so no you they were your favorites are you aware that the latest video that you and i did for uh stabby's world has been removed for violating youtube's policy on nudity or sexual content yes we're, I'm trying to figure out what happened. Bro. It's insane. It's homophobic. Like, the fact that we... Like, it was... I, I think it was educational. I, I think it was educational when, like, you whipped out your cock. I whipped out mine. Obviously, you're not <laughs> circed up. I'm circed up. And we embraced our tips. Like, that was educational. Look in your eyes. Yeah, but I said no homo afterwards. The belonging you had. I said yeah, no... You can't, you can't lie. Those pupils... It doesn't matter what the mouth says. The eyes were telling the real truth. Yeah, I know. I mean, dude, it's like dude, this was. You YouTube doesn't want to. YouTube doesn't want the the Greeks and the Turks to align like this. That's what it is. <laughs> they really don't, dude. What the they fuck? They really don't. So you have no idea what it's happened. So fucked up. No idea. Sorry, I'm having I'm having a little snack. Um, okay. I have no idea what happened, and um, they sent us like a a timestamp, but it's like such an innocuous joke about jacking off where it's like my theory is that a lot of people 
Um, yeah, it's that they're they're mad that the Turks and Greeks are coming together. And then, you know, dude, a lot of people are just jealous of you because you're a champagne socialist, because you have a house yeah. that costs too much money. Yeah. And that's frankly, frankly, part of the reason I even had you on. I was trying to draw negative attention towards you. I just didn't think it was going to affect my channel. Yeah. I was hoping it would hurt you. That's kind of, that is wild. Know. So you, you, I think you probably got mass reported, but that's crazy that like YouTube, <laughs> that's crazy that YouTube know, fucking dude, did I that. I can't believe, I really can't believe it. And uh, who knows? We're, we hit up a guy that we know, but you know, YouTube these days, it's like, you don't even know who the fuck to talk to. Yeah. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll text my. YouTube was cool. Yeah, I'll I'll try to see if there's any. I'll talk to my account manager too uh, to see if I can help out. I, I thought you would have, bro. You got you're plugged in with the fucking Baltimore Ravens. Like, what the fuck? You you're on like a Netflix show. I really thought that you would have more <laughs> more riz with YouTube. I'm what no, the fuck? I have no pull, dude. That's they're insane. Mad. Mad. I'm not strapped on the internet. That they're is to keep me there. They're that's like, wild. They're like, that's what you get for trying to get on TV. Yeah. I'll show you, little piggy. Yeah, you stay where you belong. Okay, you stay where you belong on the internet. Okay, don't 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 try to advance your stature. Anyway, um, all right. Well, I'll let you know if I if I get any feedback. Okay. All right. Let me see. Let's see if they, let's see let's see what kind of pull the Turkish syndicate has, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm getting out of on. I'm getting out of on on the line. I'm getting out of on on the line. He's gonna fix it. Dude, every Greek is sipping coffee on a beach from from like May first to October fifteenth. There's no way I can get anything done, so <laughs> fucking to really pull it, in, pull it for us, dude. Yeah, no, I got you. All right, peace, brother. All right, brother. Bye. That's crazy. That was Stavros Halkius. For those of you who don't know, and I, um, I can't believe that that YouTube did that. That's so wild. Anyway, um. But we'll we'll get it back up. We'll get it back up. The YouTube rabbit hole of non-sexual content getting blasted for sexual content has been insane the last few months. It's so broken. Unlikely it was mass reported. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But it's crazy because, like, there's butthole. Like, there's straight asshole on YouTube, man. You know what I mean? There is... There is straight butthole on YouTube. Are we for... Are we, are we for real right now? Are we going to be, like... You know... This isn't actually Ben Shapiro. I don't like singling out specific individuals for mockery on Twitter as it seems mean and unnecessary, but since that's how Ben Shapiro is spending his Valentine's Day, here's Ben Shapiro in law school, the future of Western, the Western civilization is in the, indeed in the best hands. No, this person is not actually Ben Shapiro. Anyway, not even age restricted at least. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, we got leaked JD Vance audios that we're going to be talking about. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about with, with respect to our boy Jebediah John Don Vance. Okay, he is fucking, he is all over. He's on the map, boys. He's on the fucking map. He's all over the place. He's got hella weird shit going on with him. I don't know what the fuck to say. Um... I mean, I'm very excited about that. What is this? Did you see that Marcus Baron Lee was visited by some FBI agents? What? That's crazy. What the fuck has he done that would, like, demand a visit from FBI? It was over a phone? The Escobar phone incident? What phone? It was about a Pablo Escobar phone he reviewed. Nothing to do with him. Dude, the FBI needs to fucking actually do their goddamn job, okay? And I'm not sure as to what their job is. But I'm pretty sure it's not like investigating fucking YouTubers. Okay? <laughs> like, what are you guys doing, man? Or if you're going to investigate YouTubers, like, investigate white supremacist YouTubers. The fuck? My FBI declassified story? Okay, we'll, we'll do that. There's like hella kick streamers out there running like pedophilia child pornography rings and shit. And the FBI's like, I'm sorry, you're a tech YouTuber? You're a tech YouTuber? It's time. Or maybe you're a you're a, a political commentator, Twitch streamer. You know they're gonna do Linus next. Yeah. By the way, shouts out the Majority Report for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. A Majority Report. It was Friday casual. Uh, hope you guys had a good one. And uh, what else was I gonna say? All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the motherfucking news. Uh, before I do that, actually, hold on. This is pretty funny. Uh, for those of you who missed it <laughs> last night, I had. A sequence of friends sent me videos wishing me a happy birthday, including 
uh, Faze Banks, Brother Banks, uh, longtime friend of the show, longtime friend of mine, um, you know, a goaded man who who actually allowed me to phase the freak up harder than I ever have before. Um, warning R word. Yes, he's going to say the R word. Hold on. It's pretty funny, though. I just got my wisdom teeth taken out. So apologies if I look and sound retarded. Can't say that because you're Hassan. Sorry, bleep that out. He said, can't say that you're Hassan. Sorry, please bleep that out. <laughs> He's he's Yo, fucking hilarious. 32 years old, 91 baby, just like me. We're that's not old, brother. We're getting old. No, that's 33. 91 is 33, bro. We're the same age, dog. Stop Twitch and start pumping seeds into women. We need babies out of you, <laughs> son. We need the next generation. Just kidding. Happy birthday, brother. <laughs> it's a bag that says Balenciaga, and someone wrote "not" on it. Hwood Group to Hassan from Banks. And there's a note in it. Hold up. Bro, this better be my phase chain, dude. I'm phasing the fuck up after this. Happy. <laughs> bro, he repurposed an Hwood Group card. Happy B-Day. Thank you for your love and support, Banks. Bro, and the phase family. <laughs> it's the thought that matters. I'm so fucking phased up. Hey, W Recycling. W Banks Recycling. And it is, from what I understand, that back there. A Rick Owens, a Rick w. Owens American flag. W gift, W in the chat, W what gifter, the? W gifter. What? W gifter bank. <laughs> is a Rick Owens American flag by at Grimy Kids, which is fire. I suspect he was like, you know, you like America, politics and such. One nation under Rick. Bro, there's more shit in here. Hold up. I'm so phased up right now. Nissan G Fuel Energy Formula Phase Clan Big League Pillow. This is a rare item. Bro, what does this go for on eBay? Banks was sleeping in this pillow. He was using this pillow to sleep in. What the fuck? There's still more. What is this? 100 Thieves Phase Clan and and what what is the other one? Is it like Optic or something? 100 Thieves Phase Clan and Optic shirt with the original Phase Clan tag inside. Does this mean I'm an honorary member of all three? Is that how that works? He was cleaning his garage man W Face. How dare you say that? How dare you say that? Happy Thursday. I'm officially a part of phase, dude. Okay. I'm officially, I'm officially phase the fuck up. Like straight up. <laughs> Someone said, don't promote this socialist. <laughs> he texted you and explicitly said, you're not. No, shut up. He didn't say that. He was just kidding. When he, when he texted me and said, come on, bro, you're not in phase. You're too old for phase. He was just kidding. He was like, cause get, cause like he's the same age as me. You know what I mean? So like, he was just making a joke. He said you're part owner. Yeah, he's like, you're not a part of FaZe Clan. You're, you are FaZe. Like, you're a part owner now. That's what he said. And he's right. So, you are phased. <laughs> um, Please let all the gamer frogs following FaZe Clan become socialist. Yeah, okay, that's not going to happen anytime soon, big dog. Not going to lie. Okay, I don't have pull like that. I don't have aura like that. I don't have riz like that. Okay, I wish. But I don't. Um. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to it. We got we got some interesting news, some good news, some bad news. We got all the news that's fit to print. Barack and Michelle Obama endorsed Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee. Don't know why it took him. Don't know why it took him this long. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. They're going with the perfect campaigning line. That's not real. J.D. Vance is a creep who wants to ban abortion nationwide. J.D. Vance is weird. Voters know it. Vance is the most unpopular VP pick in decades. This week... Wait, okay, that's actually kind of dope. Are they actually... Is that real or is that fake? I hope it's real. Dude, okay, now I suspect there are motherfuckers who are listening, okay? I'm sorry. Maybe I'm crazy. But I do feel like on the messaging front, there's a lot of... There's a lot of stuff that these guys are saying that I've been saying for some time. Hopefully they'll be able to listen to some of the other things in terms of the immigration policy and changing at least the messaging on both the immigration policy for the Sun Belt, at least for Arizona, New Mexico, younger voters, Hispanic voters, and also on Gaza. Staffers, if you're in here, okay, wink, wink, you know. Analysts, if you're in here, wink, wink, nod, nod, little push, little push here, little push there. Remember, remember, Americans don't care about foreign policy. They don't. They're also very susceptible to changing their perceptions on certain issues as long as there is like 
enough campaigning on that front, enough messaging on that front on immigration. Joe Biden performed better in 2020 when he was objectively anti-Trump immigration. He performed significantly worse now in 2024 before he dropped out on immigration because he went right wing on the issue. These are good things to think about. Okay. Remember Donald Trump, Donald Trump versus Joe Biden matchup in 2020 on immigration. Joe Biden was still trailing behind Donald Trump, but much closer to Donald Trump on immigration than he was by 2024. So please also don't me don't lean into the memes. The messaging on JD Vance being weird is good. Okay. That's good messaging. It's good because it basically, it basically cuts away at like the serious danger that they present because Republicans love presenting themselves as a serious danger. Saying he's weird is good because he is weird. He's gross. He's icky. He gives people the ick. Keep calling him a weirdo. That's fine. Okay. Now give us uh, uh, Republicans some advice. Y'all are cooked. Okay. Uh, immediately institute socialism. Just advocate for socialism. Y'all are cooked anyway. I do actually unironically give Republicans advice as well on here when I'm criticizing them. And then chatters will be like, why are you giving the Republican party advice? They watch you. And it's like, I don't think they do. And even if they do, I don't think they fucking can stop themselves. Yeah. Don't lean into the Brad and coconut memes. Let that shit happen organically. Don't do it. Don't hyper focus on celebrity endorsements. Nobody cares. Do the regular job. Do your job. You're a political campaign. You are not, you are not selling albums, okay? You're a fucking political campaign. Get some goddamn door knockers on board. Get some real momentum. This is no longer the 2016 campaign. This is no longer the 2020 campaign. This is the 2008 election, okay? Obviously, the dynamic is very different. There isn't like... A, you know, a, a tremendous amount of hatred for the Republican Party due to the fact that for eight years there was um, for for uh, for eight years, there was like a shit ton of of uh, war on terror nonsense, plus the economic downturn, the the collapse of the global economy, that kind of stuff doesn't exist here. And it's not like a two term Republican that fucked everything up. Having said that, however, in terms of Kamala Harris's in terms of Kamala Harris's qualities, she's younger, dynamic, could uh, and and looks significantly younger as a consequence of who she replaced, Joe Biden. She also reads young. That's a big benefit. Despite being fifty nine, she looks like she's forty. She's hot. You know what I mean? Like these things matter. People like that shit. Okay, people like that shit. That's important. Like, I, it's not, I'm not, guys, guys, come on. Aesthetics are very important for a political campaign, okay? They matter a lot. People make decisions. People make decisions like this uh, on, on, on those boundaries, 100%. So, like I was saying, the demographics that you can captivate from here on out are going to be Obama-based demographics. Go for the youth vote. But you have to change course on some of this stuff, okay? Anyway, well, let's get to Obama's anyway. All Race right. for the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris picking up a big endorsement from former President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama as she goes on a campaign blitz. Four states in just four days. Our senior White House correspondent, Selena Wang, is tracking the latest. If you call her Blasian, I'm reporting you. Why would I? I would never say that. Like, now you... Now you put that thought into the minds of at least 30,000 people. You did that. Are you happy? Good morning, Selena. Good morning, Rebecca. Vice President Kamala Harris is racing to rally support across the country. With the election now just 100 days away, she is aggressively going after Donald Trump and hitting that campaign trail. Hi. Hey there. This morning. I don't understand the change in narrative on Gaza advice. Are we asking her to bluff voters with sweet talking while, she, while still sending the votes? I think, I mean, there's, I'm of two different minds here in terms of like what she needs to do in order for me to be committed or for me to be excited about her prospects. She does need to change course on Gaza. I don't know how much she can do uh, when Joe Biden is the president and you can't 
deviate away from this like arrogant entitled man who probably thinks like the world owes him whatever the fuck he wants and is one of the most arrogant entitled zionists out there okay the only thing she can do as joe biden's vice president while simultaneously running for president is basically messaging on that front she needs to actually she needs to deviate and maybe even try to make sure that Joe Biden doesn't fuck up the bag too much. Okay? Any chance of Felix coming on today to talk about the J.D. Vance Freak Show? Why would I invite Felix to come back on after he was on on Wednesday? That's crazy. Bro, Biden's stance on Gaza is not an outlier. Get real. Wait, what? It's, I like, I love that you are hitting both angles here. Like, you're, are you actually riding with the Democrats now? Does endorsing genocide matter? Bro, Biden's stance on Gaza is not an outlier. Get real. Biden's stance on Gaza is is demonstrably unpopular you are delusional if we're talking about the voter base biden is literally less popular than trump on gaza one of the many benefits of not being president while gaza is happening but still what are you saying right now the notion that like if you were to say people don't have gaza as their top of mind issue you would be correct and i'm not making that argument at all okay i am not making that argument at all but Biden is an outlier on Gaza. Biden's, Biden's dick riding of Israel on Gaza is literally an outlier in the Democratic Party, and it's certainly an outlier in the broader electorate. It is not represented by most people. The notion that, like, the notion that he just keeps saying, like, oh, yeah, there's going to be a two-state, but also, like, it's Hamas. Hamas is responsible for everything. It's Hamas, 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 blah, 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 blah. Like, consistently <laughs> consistently lying at the behest of israel okay consistently lying at the behest of israel is 100 percent at this stage especially nine months in 10 months in is an outlier okay it's a stance for the military industrial complex sure maybe it's not an outlier in the dmv nova voters okay people that work at lockheed martin raytheon executives they love that shit okay they're lying in their goddamn pockets they don't have an issue with that take obviously like rabid ultra zionists in general despite not voting for biden and they will never vote for biden they agree with biden on this issue they will never vote for biden if you're if you're trying to captivate the texas mega church voters okay then yeah you're on lot you're you're on board with their insane bloodlust right but as far as as far as as the broader electorate goes, how many fucking polls do you need to see? How many polls do you need to see that shows that like Americans are fed up with the way things are going? Kamala is anti Hamas, not pro Israel or pro Palestine. Is good. Wait, what? <laughs> no, that's not, dude. Hamas should not be a word that comes out of the mouths of any Democrats going forward from this point on. Okay, it's just not a like. It, it is just totally bad optics, okay? There is no reason to consistently talk like you are on the side of what Americans consider to be a terror group, okay? Like, I'm not saying this as my own personal convictions because Hamas and all, all matter of Palestinian resistance right now is on a defensive posture against a genocide, and therefore I do believe that they are on the right side, regardless of their domestic affairs, regardless of their overall worldview, they are currently engaging in an internationally lawful act in terms of defending these occupied territories from a belligerent occupier, okay? That's not just my assessment of the situation, that is backed up by international law. Having said that, however, Obviously, if you're running for fucking, obviously, if you're running for, for you know, uh, the American presidency, you're not going to run around and be like, I love Hamas. Hamas is doing that. You're not going to say any of those things. But you shouldn't be talking about Hamas at all. Okay? You shouldn't. Because it's a losing position. Don't associate Palestinian death and destruction with Hamas at all. One, because Israel is doing all of the death and destruction. It's not Hamas that's doing the death and destruction. And... Any, any invocation of Hamas, any time you mention Hamas, you're just coming at this situation from a losing position when it's objectively unpopular. What Israel's doing is objectively unpopular. There is a partisan battle that you can fight in American domestic politics in terms of unconditional loyalty and support to Israel. Just put this th stink on the Republicans. 
put the fucking stink directly on Republicans. Be like, I, I've told you the method, okay? I told you the winning strategy. And even my girl Nancy Pelosi is kind of hitting this, okay? The winning strategy in this circumstance would literally to go, Benjamin Netanyahu seemingly is more popular in the American Republican Party than he is in the international community where he is a, you know, a war criminal with a warrant application out for his arrest. He is seemingly more popular in the American Republican Party than he is in Israel in his own fucking Knesset. Like, there's only one group of people propping this motherfucker up, and it's the Republicans. Just say that. Okay? So that's it. And that's true. Benjamin Netanyahu is objectively more popular with American Republicans, American Republican politicians, than he is in his own fucking country. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, it's also obvious that he wants Trump to win. Okay? He wants Trump to win. So, like, any kind of, any kind of mention, any kind of mention as to, like, uh, Bibi Netanyahu on, like, positive terms or anything that, like, helps Benjamin Netanyahu look good and look like a, like a decent uh, foreign leader is just hurting you. Like, Benjamin Netanyahu literally went to Mar-a-Lago to suck his cock, okay? Come on now. Are we for real? Be for fucking real, dude. He's wearing a total victory hat. He brought up total victory on the fucking congressional speech. Get out of here. Democrats cannot, Democrats cannot sit, stand idly by and let this shit fly, dude. Even on partisan grounds. Also, there's some good news on the Israel front. UK drops opposition to the International Criminal Court warrant for Netanyahu. I apologize to the labor. I apologize to Keir Starmer, more like Keir Stalin. Uh, you know, I, I said a lot of disrespectful things about him. I didn't know. I didn't know what kind of game he was playing out there. Okay. Things are kind of shifting in a decent direction. It, it is a largely a consequence of the unimaginable amounts of pressure that has, that has uh, kept up since October 7. Okay. So never forget uh, pressure from the public pressure from international organs of justice it this is you know things are shifting okay so we'll we'll um you know i mean I, i'm still not i'm still holding out hope on here starmer being i don't think he's going to be like a fucking legendary leftist or anything but vice president kamala harris getting a major endorsement and revving up why don't you put pressure on hamas to end the war and surrender I don't know, dog. Do you think I have a line? Do you think I can talk to Yahya Sinwar, number one? And number two, they have already brought up ceasefire negotiations a million times over. This is such an idiotic question to ask, and it's not a serious question. It's like objectively unserious, considering that there have been 39 instances where Hamas has brought forward multiple different ceasefire proposals, and Israel's the one who's consistently saying no to that. Okay, at this point, the entire global community wants a ceasefire. Kamala Harris reiterated that position as well earlier uh, yesterday. The current three stage, three phase ceasefire negotiation, permanent ceasefire and permanent cessation of hostilities negotiation is a carbon copy of the Hamas proposal that was delivered in February. So the reality is that one side is trying to get a ceasefire deal. The other side is saying, no, I want to keep fucking doing this war, partially because there's a lot of appetite for death and destruction in Israel, okay? There's broad majority support for that sort of thing. Benjamin Netanyahu also wants to continue the war because he doesn't want to go to jail because the moment that the war ends, the moment that the war ends, the war cabinet goes away, new government comes in, Benjamin Netanyahu's position is like not as strong as it used to be, he most likely might he he might not be able to put together a winning coalition and if he doesn't have a governing coalition then all of his legal issues come back to the far, uh, to the forefront considering that he's an unimaginably unpopular singular being despite the fact that uh, Israelis kept voting for him over and over again for fucking 30 years at this point you know he has a personal ambition a personal motivation for continuing waging war and, and murdering as many Palestinian children as possible so a lot of commonalities with Donald Trump, by the way, which is another angle. It's just so stupid. There you go. Hopefully that's understandable for you. Uh, hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. Um, the only thing voters agree on are a ceasefire actually putting pressure on stopping weapons for Israel is a different thing to the broader public. Sure.
Let's continue. Up her campaign. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. The former president and first lady, Barack and Michelle Obama, throwing their seismic weight behind Harris as she finishes her first week as a presidential candidate, hitting four states in four days. Bring it on. They're late to the game, later than I am, 15 minutes into the top of the hour when I serve you a three minute ad break. You know what I'm saying? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. Sometimes I serve it 15 minutes in because I'm late to the fucking game, right? They couldn't even get an Obama FaceTime. Guess the signal from the yacht was that bad. Yeah, yeah that's wild. Okay. Here's the three-minute ad break. Now, by the way, you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. If you're lucky, you can get gifted a sub and avoid seeing the ads that way. Um, here's the three-minute ad break now. Bring it on. And sharpening her attacks on Trump as an enemy of the middle class. Donald Trump and his extreme allies want to take our nation back to failed trickle-down economic policies, back to union busting, back to tax breaks for billionaires. Night, Harris rallying one of the nation's largest teachers' unions in Houston, Texas. We want to ban assault weapons, and they want to ban books. We choose freedom. The vice That's president great. dropping her first... We want to ban assault weapons. They want to ban books. Good line. It's a good line. It's good. Smart. It's easy to comprehend. It's easy to understand. It's a good line. This campaign ad featuring Beyonce's song Freedom. I need freedom too. The freedom not just to get by, but get ahead. Harris says she's ready to debate. I think also angling like um I've always been a fan of of angling the sentiment on um on like economic, like progressive economic policies, like leftist economic populism, uh, angling it on things that Americans respond positively to like freedom is not necessarily a bad thing. I think that is a good thing as well, because what is freedom? If you have no freedom to, to fucking change jobs because you're terrified that you're going to lose your health care, you know what I mean? Like a lot of, a lot of misdirection and misinformation in terms of socialism has existed in American discourse for almost a century at this point uh, about like how it's of collectivism. Socialism is about collectivism. It's about everyone collectively being poor. And it's like, no, it's actually about individual freedoms. Okay. Any kind of socialization initiative is done at the behest of opening up more individual freedoms. And I do think that that is like a good way. Uh, that is definitely a good way to, to angle that as well. Um, bad line assault weapons are awesome. I mean, I agree. Okay. As an assault weapons enjoyer myself, as a, uh, as an assault weapons enjoyer myself, I do uh, consider them to be fun, but I also do think that they should absolutely be severely restricted. Okay. Severely, really Donald Trump. I think the voters deserve to see the split screen that exists in this race on a debate stage. And so I'm ready. Let's go. But Trump now backtracking on his pledge to face off on stage, his campaign saying it would be inappropriate to schedule things with Harris because Democrats very well could still change their minds. Harris quickly pitting Trump's words against him, asking what happened to any time, any place when the nominee was President Joe Biden. And this morning, previous comments from Trump. Yeah, Biden. Uh, I mean, not Biden. Sorry. Uh, fucking Donald Trump backing out of the debate is such cowardice. And it also, once again, shows that they are in panic mode, okay? They are in complete panic mode. I'm telling you right now, they are, they, it just, one, it makes them look weak because, like, you could do that. You could do that in the Republican Party primaries because you were ripping, right? Like, there was no one that was coming near you and presenting yourself in front of these people who might actually be able to show up and say that you were responsible for the electoral defeats in 2022 to the Republican, uh, to the broader Republican primary voters probably would have made you look a little bad. I wanted Donald Trump to debate because he's pretty good at stuff like that. Normally he's lost a little bit of his riz, I would say. But having said that, having said that, the fact that he was like, I'm down to do a debate. And then he was like, actually just kidding. I don't want to do a debate with a new candidate 
with a candidate like Kamala Harris, who you're talking shit about, saying she's dumb. Okay. What? Aw, why'd you ban that guy? That was impressive, the amount of swear words he put into one one text. Um, but yeah, I think that um I think that they are so so uh like they're they're just in in a state of such panic that like they don't know what to do. This isn't a strategic decision. This is a petty tantrum at losing their favorite punching bag. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if she's a DEI hire who's dumb as a rock, who only got to her position by like, you know, having sex with people in power, then you should make short work of her. Like you can't be you can't be the god of discourse. You can't be the god of debates. You can't be this like charismatic, telegenic figure who's running away from debates. This isn't the fucking primaries where you're literally putting up, you're putting up fucking LeBron numbers uh, over and over again. You're actually going up against a pretty fucking close opponent who is, you know, right out of the gates, caught up to your uh, to your performance thus far, caught up to your um, caught up to your polling numbers pretty quickly. Kamala Harris has already pledged to sign the Pro Act. By the way, that's pretty good. That's why Mark Kelly, that bitch who literally neutered the PRO Act, like who de defeated the PRO Act uh, inside the Democratic caucus, came out and was like, oh, just kidding. I would sign the PRO Act, actually. Fucking piece of shit. A little too late for that, don't you think? Fuck you, Mark Kelly. I am not excited at the prospect of a Josh Shapiro or a Mark Kelly VP pick. I do not like it at all. I think it's absolutely awful. A lot of people are talking about how much they like him. Okay? And I don't. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Uh, it would be a bad idea. We'll talk about the Reed Hoffman stuff too. Like there's definitely donor pressure on Kamala Harris changing course on certain things, including uh, taking out FDC, uh, FDC's Lena Khan. All right, let's continue. Trump's vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance, first reported by ABC, calling for people without children to be taxed more. We need to reward the things that we think are good and punish the things that we think are bad. So you talk about tax policy. Let's tax the things that are bad and not tax the things that are good. If you're making $100,000, $400,000 a year, and you've got three kids, you should pay a different lower tax rate than if you're making the same amount of money and you don't have any kids. It's Boo, boring, too technocratic, you're boring, you got no riz, you fucking suck. This is so, this is like, dude, this is such a gift from, this is such a holy gift from Donald Trump Jr. to the Democratic Party, okay? He is so lib-coded. Like, what are you, Elizabeth Warren? What the fuck do you mean? Oh, we need to use our tax structure to incentivize people. Like, that's not what gets good play in the Republican Party, dumbass. Like, he's trying to uh, advocate for, for ease, for parents in America without actually saying ch expanding child tax credits because that will be associated with Biden. That will be associated with Kamala Harris because that's what Kamala Harris is running on an objectively popular economic populist agenda. Okay. A leftist policy. Okay. A progressive policy. I want to say leftist. So JD can't say that. So he's just like, oh, well, um, um, what we should do is like, um, offer tax incentives to, um, parents and, uh, and make it so that we're taxing people who don't have children higher. And it's just like, no, you're, it's too boring. It's not easy to comprehend. It, it is like, it, it's like an Elizabeth Warren style policy um, with, uh, you know, a right wing Elizabeth Warren uh, ass approach to, to uh, otherwise like super easy to understand uh, policy making from the Democrats for once. It's that simple. The comments resurfaced after a clip of Vance questioning the leadership abilities of people without kids was already getting blowback. He's doing what you always say you'd be able to do in pretending to be a really good Republican politician, except he's really bad at it. Yeah, I mean, he is. His instincts are bad. He's got no fucking riz. He is a charisma suck. He is deeply unpopular. And he is deeply fucking unpopular in his own goddamn state. People that know him hate him. I told you that that was the case, and here it is. There is actual data for it beyond my data points of uh, the fact that Donald Trump chose a guy who was less popular in the state of Ohio, a deep red state already at this point, um, 
that gives him no no benefit to the election at all. Okay? This this like childless cat lady narrative paired up with the DEI shit is going to rip, okay? It is already ripping. It is already ripping. As I talked to Estead yesterday, remember, like black people in general, brown people in general, like they know what DEI pick means, especially black people. They know, they know what that means, okay? They hear that every time. They're going to be like, even if they were down to fucking vote for Donald Trump, Donald Trump's charisma and Donald Trump's like macho image is not going to be good enough to overcome the steady flow of racist sentiment that they hear on a daily fucking basis being reiterated from those in positions of power that they could potentially vote for. Okay. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable. This is so good. It's so awesome watching these fucking dipshits do podcasts, their talking points, and then like running for president, running for vice president, thinking that this gets good play for the broad majority of the public. Attacking step and adoptive parents is actually insane. Combine that with opposing IVF and they're going to lose like even conservative leading people. These are some of the most personal decisions that people make. I know it's so funny that Donald Trump literally recognizes how elect how much of an electoral poison that is that he immediately was like, whoa, 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 we're not banning IVF. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Whoa, 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 what do you what do you mean? No, we're not touching IVF. Get the fuck out of here. And then like the fucking Southern congregation of Baptist churches got together and they were like, no, actually, we do want to ban IVF. What are you guys doing? And then he went and listen to his dumbass son, Don Jr., on who to pick for his VP and went with this fucking guy, a guy who has been incredibly much more restrictive than uh, uh, Donald Trump has been on abortion publicly, okay, with the way he communicates, and also a guy who is, who's gone above and beyond further than that, constantly talking about, like, women should be having babies, they're fucking broodmares, like, come on, what are we doing? They're baby incubators. They're baby incubators. They're baby incubators. If you don't have a baby as a woman, what the fuck are you doing? Americans don't like that shit. Okay. Even women that want to have children are going to be like, okay, bro, chill the fuck out. Like, what are you talking about? What do you got a fucking breeding fetish? What the hell is this shit? Too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. Actress. Now, when he turns around and apologizes for this, which he will, okay, and I believe he has already, like, tried to, like, re-message this point. If he apologizes for it, then he's fucking weak. He's already wishy-washy. He called Trump Hitler. Now he's Trump's VP and loves Trump. People already don't think that he's a genuine person. And now here's another major policy prescription that he had that he has to fucking go back on. If he doubles down, he looks like a complete psychopath. If he actually apologizes, he looks like a spineless little loser. So ultimately, he is fucked. And this is precisely one of the reasons uh, one of the reasons as to why I said he was a weak ass. He was a weak ass candidate from the jump. Jennifer Aniston sharing Vance's comments with her 44 million Instagram followers, writing, I truly can't believe this is coming from a potential VP of the United States. And the former wife of Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, coming to her defense, noting that Harris co-parents their two children. Kirsten Emhoff writing, for over 10 years since Cole and Ella were teenagers, Kamala has been a co-parent with Doug and I. She is loving, nurturing, fiercely protective, and always present. I love her blended family and am grateful to- The Republicans failing is literally a symptom of no longer having Mitch McConnell around? No, it's a more, it's a more structural problem for the Republican Party. If you recall, I talked about this quite a bit leading up to the 2020 midterm, uh, 2022 midterms and far beyond that. Republicans in the post Roe v. Wade world are now victims of their own success. Okay. This is a more holistic issue within the Republican Party. There is no way to message your way out of this in some respects. And Donald Trump might be one of the last people that at least like captivate certain aspects of the base before they completely have to change direction and maybe even suffer electoral defeats for a couple for like at least one generation before they uh, before they get back into shape because either this country just 
you know, either this country becomes total fascist, okay? And that could happen. This is what I've been saying since 2022. Either everyone becomes like the rabid Matt Walsh uh, watchers that are just constantly thinking about like murdering trans people, assuming that there's a trans person in every fucking corner and they're all pedophiles or whatever, or they are just so grossed out by that in the suburbs that they basically are just like, I don't want this man. Like, I don't know what to do here. Like, I just don't, this is gross. This is loser shit. The problem that they have is that the conservative media like Fox news and now YouTube influencers are the base of the party. And it creates incentives to be most, the most right wing in order to get more views and clicks. They can't ride the tiger anymore to appeal to normies. Yeah. They are collapsing under the weight of their own success. Exactly. That is like, they are, very successful in enacting their right-wing agenda at the state level, which is not democratic. Because at the state level, they're using redistricting to enforce their will, okay? In, when they have no business having that much power at the state level. So they just utilize the state legislature to be like, we are focusing all of our efforts on, I don't know, this new bill that declares that in the state of Ohio, we are going to check your daughter to see if she has a pussy or a penis, okay? They're doing penis inspection day and shit. Nobody asked for that, okay? Nobody. Nobody except for, like, I don't know, Matt Walsh watchers that don't even fucking live in Ohio have asked for this. No one is like, oh, thank God, okay? Thank God that there's penis inspection day happening. So when they keep doing that, they keep getting into this like fever, this feverish hysterical cycle where they think like, oh, we are actually popular, right? We are actually very popular, see? We're enacting our agenda, so we are very popular. It's like, no, you're not, dumbass. You forgot that you have utilized the least democratic aspects of American governance to your advantage. You've utilized the court system and you've utilized state legislatures. You've completely sidestepped Congress you are basically getting everything you want to get on these incredibly objectively unpopular or irrelevant policy agendas that are all hyper-focused on culture war issues that appeal to like some of the weirdest, sweatiest fucking losers that comes across as like genuinely off-putting to genuinely off-putting, okay? To the broadest, uh, to the broadest uh, parts of the electorate, Okay. You never want to be the, I'm going to do children's genital inspection day party. You don't want to be that. Okay. This isn't to say that like the broadest majority of Americans aren't like somewhat transphobic. They are. Okay. It is obviously the normal position is that most people are just like, yeah, I don't really understand this trans shit. It's weird. It feels kind of gross to me. That is like what the average person's opinion is. And everyone knows this. All the trans people in this community know this. There's a reason why even trans people themselves oftentimes are very transphobic before they recognize that they are trans, okay? Because the reality of the matter is that gender, albeit a social construct, has been taught a certain way for generations to people. It's a very deeply personal aspect of our existence. And people think that, you know, there's only two genders. That's it. It's biology when it's not. It's obviously a social construct. But that's too educational that, that gets into like complex uh, thinking that people don't want to fucking contend with, especially if you're like 50 years old and all you knew was boy, girl, man, woman, your whole fucking life. So that paired up with the fact that like trans people are uh, a, a genuinely tiny margin that is not broadly representative of anything in society makes them an easy fucking target for the Republican Party. But, but... One thing that people don't understand is, or one people that uh, one thing that people don't actually uh, vibe with all that much is how much of a hyper focus there is on trans people in either direction. I've often urged the Democratic Party to also not run on like we're pro trans people only and that's it. We're gonna keep fucking. Uh, we're gonna keep refusing to give people health care. Uh, but, you know, we're pro-trans, but if you're trans and you're homeless, then you're, you can eat shit and die. Like, that's a terrible policy position. You've not only adopted an unpopular thing, but you're also simultaneously not like, uh, not like pushing a broader uh, message that could be captivating to, to larger subsects of society. Just be fucking normal, right? Just be normal.
And what I mean by that is, like, pro-trans positions should come along with an agenda that is objectively popular in the way that Bernie Sanders has done it always. You know what I mean? This is not about, like, identity. This is about class. This is about... Uh, helping as many Americans as possible. And also, hey, you want health care? Okay, well, you can't be fucking weird about trans people. That's it. They get to have health care too. Suck my dick. That's how you're supposed to sell this message. Now, on the other side, when Republicans are only talking about trans people, people are going to be like, dude, I can't buy eggs. Okay? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, children's penises? Like, why are you talking about this? You're gross. I don't want to think about this at all. Why are you constantly bringing this up? Shut the fuck up. I can't buy shit, okay? I want to be able to buy shit. My rent is too fucking expensive, and all you're saying is how children are being fucking mutilated. You're weird and gross, dude. Shut the fuck up. That is the problem with the Republican Party. And if they fucking constantly think about that, and their brain is rotted, and they're like, this is all we're doing. This is what we're going to give you. Okay? Then, yeah, they become objectively weird and toxic and gross. And they're basically doing that not just for trans issues in general, which, by the way, plays really well to the base. Okay? That does. That's why when Trump talks about the trans stuff in his rallies, people go, yeah, he's doing it. He's doing the thing. He's talking about trans people and how much they suck. And it's like, okay, but that's just the rallies. You're not going to actually, you're not going to be able to captivate a broader subsect of the population by just simply hitting that line over and over again. Okay. I live in Ohio and I got to disagree. I literally can't go anywhere without someone bringing up trans kids. Yes. I'm not saying that the people aren't fucking brain broken on this issue, but that's Ohio big dog. Okay. It's already red as fuck. Do you not get it? One thing that the democratic party did without even recognizing that they were doing this, or one thing that like liberals did in general leading up to 2016 was just be kind of annoying all the time about social justice shit. They were in the right morally, but Americans don't like that moralizing posture. Americans don't like getting chirped at all the fucking time. I'm talking about people that just like, you know, people that are in your lives that you talk to on a daily basis who are like, I don't know what's going on with the world of politics. I don't fucking care. Who gives a shit? Like those guys that end up going out and voting the general election don't want to constantly fucking hear about people chirping, okay? And the Republicans are way more hysterical, way more fucking hysterical than the, than the way that like the, the 2015, 2014, 2016 era social justice warriors were. They've never stopped chirping. Republicans have always chirped in the exact same way. But at least there was enough of, there was at least enough momentum to say, these are all the SJWs uh, that are doing this kind of thing. They love cancel culture. They love cancel culture narrative. That set in. Okay, that set in successfully. So we shouldn't chirp about immigration or healthcare or all either. No, dude, what are you talking about? I don't think we need to see the trans issue. It's like we shouldn't see immigration or crime. No, no. You're completely misunderstanding what I'm saying. I never said give up on trans rights or anything. What the fuck do you mean? I just said putting something like healthcare in the forefront, putting something like the Kamala Harris campaign is doing right now, like th that Joe Biden was doing, as a matter of fact, unsuccessfully because he's like, fucking old, but like talking about kitchen table issues, talking about shit that affects the pocketbook, okay? That is sound. That is sound policy in general, and that's good politics, okay? Stepping outside of the culture war narrative is a smart thing to do. That doesn't give up. That doesn't mean giving up on trans people. I never said that. Have the Dems actually put trans people on the forefront? No, they, they haven't. And I think that's somewhat of a good thing in general. They haven't. Hillary Clinton kind of did it a little bit because she was like genuinely more neoliberal than um joe biden was and which is surprising i know and genuinely more neoliberal than than kamala was so i think hillary clinton kind of did that a little bit and it's like it's just ultimately you're not offering people anything it's just you're just basically saying you're not even offering trans people anything by the way you're just saying you're just like putting them in the forefront of the conversation and being like see these are our people this is what we care about and it's just like a little bit of lip service to trans people when, like, trans people 
do not make up a significant proportion of the voter base. <laughs> like, and all you've done now is just like, you didn't even fucking put forward any sort of sound policy or anything like that. And all you've done is basically say like, oh yeah, we're, this is what we're about and nothing else. I've always, I've always, uh, I've always been of the mindset. And I, I, I used to say this about Bernie Sanders all the time too. It's like, bro, you want fucking healthcare? You want Medicare for all? That's a good thing. Objectively popular policy, objectively good idea in general. Okay. Then yeah, everyone's going to get it. That's it. Medicare for all means Medicare for all. It means trans people get it too. That's it. Joe Biden didn't mention the word trans one time in the lead up to the 2020 election. Exactly. Dude, this is why like, like I saw a video. I don't know where it was, but here, this is like, let me see if I can find it. There's a TikTok I saw where FaZe Banks was like around... I think he was like around uh, Sneeko or something. And some guy comes up to him, okay? And he's like, yo, FaZe Banks, how many genders are there? Okay? And he's like, I don't know, dog. I don't give a shit. I'm about my money, okay? And it's kind of like the Joe Biden moment where Joe Biden was like, at least three, if you remember in 2019, that's what he said. And it's just that in and of itself is like, that's the best possible way to have this conversation. It's like, who gives a fuck, man? What are you talking about? He's like, I'm about my money. That's it. That's it. And that's like, I mean, come on. That's FaZe Banks. Like, that is the most, like, Ohio boy you can get in that circumstance. I don't know if I can find it. And then someone's like, and then someone is like, oh, well, Sneeko said there's only two or whatever. And he's like, yeah, that's just weird stuff that he's always talking about. He literally was like, yeah, that's just, he's on a different planet with that shit. I don't care. Like, that's basically, that's basically something, like, I think about quite a bit in terms of, like, how to deal with this kind of messaging where people are constantly like, dude, dude, well, uh, what about gender? What about gender? What about trans people? What about trans people? He's like, dude, I don't, I, dude, what, what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, what, 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 why do you, what are you doing? Like, are you okay? Why do you fucking constantly think about this shit? Anyway, I can't find the, I can't find the clip right now, but I think that's like that kind of dismissal and calling Republicans weird is a pretty sound way to deal with a lot of this shit because they are fucking weird. No, this is him responding to it, but here, I think this is, yeah, this is the, this is the clip. I don't know, man. Who gives a fuck? I talked to Sneeko over there. He told me there was two. Hey, how many genders are there, by the way? Come on, bro. Yeah. Sneeko's on that time. All I know is how much bread I got in my bank account, and it's a lot. <laughs> you can put me in a fucking closet with the lights off and a blindfold on. I'm still ripping. Wait, FaZe Bank's in the closet? That's funny. Hold up. You're funny. This guy's f There you go. That's it. That's that. But, like, all jokes aside, all jokes aside, that is, like, that is sound. Like, to, to deal with this question is, like, very sound. It's just like, dude, what are you talking about? Talk about shit that actually matters, okay? This doesn't mean that trans people don't matter. This doesn't mean that, like, all of the Republican legislation passed on that front is, is something that we should just cast aside or not fight back against. It's just that you're literally trying to bully people. Like, putting this in terms that people understand is good. You're just trying to bully some of the most, like, some of the least protected people on the planet and it's objectively odd that you're doing that it's objectively weird that this occupies so much time in your mind so much space in your mind what the fuck is wrong with you like you mean what actually matters to the average person yes and also what matters to trans people too it's not like trans people are fucking magical deities magical beings that are somehow outside of the fucking sphere of the economy when you talk about medicare for all or when you talk about fucking education when you talk about child tax rates, when you talk about this side of, this sort of shit when you talk about labor uh labor protections like that's trans people too they're literally in the fucking workforce they're not like i know that republicans kind of run this run the table on like trans people being magical people that are just like the best athletes you've ever seen and are just like running around stealing fucking awards from uh cis women or some shit but like that's not how that works <laughs> you know what i mean they're just regular fucking people that happen to be fucking trans that's it you know what i mean all right but uh let's finish this off and then we'll continue with the jd van stuff to have her in it 
Ella Emhoff adding, how can you be childless when you have cutie pie kids like Cole and I? I love my three parents. And time is running out for Harris to pick a running mate. I'm told she's still considering a pool of about a dozen people. And on Monday, Governor Shapiro and Whitmer are both campaigning for Harris in Battleground, Pennsylvania. Both of them are considered possible running mates. Whit. All eyes on that decision for sure. Selena Wang, thank you. It was just moments ago, Vice President Kamala Harris picked up the formal endorsement of former President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama as well. Here is the brand new video. Kamala. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Kamala. Oh, hi. You're both together. Oh, it's good to hear you both. I, I, I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle, Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both, and um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the, the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both. It means so much. And, um, and we're going to have some fun with this too, aren't we? So this is not unexpected, but could be a bit awkward for Donald Trump this morning. Overnight, his campaign said it would not commit to debating Harris in part because she had not been endorsed by Obama. Well, now she has. With us now, CNN senior White House correspondent Kayla Tausche. Kayla, again, not unexpected. Dude, it's so funny. Why can't they do a normal endorsement video instead of the cringe ass shit? That's ah, fine. I don't give a shit. I think what matters is the endorsement coming in. That's what matters. And I do think that it's, again, a fucking landmine that Trump stepped on again. If I'm Donald Trump, I'm so pissed. He just keeps, like, he just keeps constantly trying to, in a state of panic, like, hit any angle he can. And he's like, yeah, the Democrats are so chaotic. See, Obama didn't even endorse Kamala. And then Obama endorsed Kamala, and he's like, back to fucking square one. Okay? It's just legitimately i've never seen i don't know if this is kismet i don't know if it's fucking fate i i've never seen this much like i've never seen things go so well for the democrats in general and so poorly for the republicans so far now this doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to like figure out how to campaign because remember there are i mean republicans have a history of winning with bad policies all the fucking time but i don't know where all of that political acumen went i don't know if they just like if they just perished like what happened they have become the chris rufo party for some weird reason constantly talking about like um the epigenetic predisposition of the the uh you know latin americans or something or or, or fucking how women have to give birth all the time non-stop it, that does not make a successful campaign okay that does not make for a successful campaign you cannot be the you cannot be the conceptual James party. You cannot be the Christopher Rufo party. Unexpected, but kind of shows this tight rollout that Harris has had over the last now. This is what the sixth day. Yes, John, highly choreographed. Even though all of this came together in the eleventh hour over just the. Yeah, I mean, I guess like part of it is because Trump gutted the RNC and replaced them with loyalists, but like. But, like, they're still advisors, okay? They're still fucking... The, the advisors are still supposed to be there. Like, I don't know what's happening in the back office, but, like, they used to have a fucking deep lineup of genuine vultures, okay? They used to have a deep lineup of actual vultures, right? I, I don't know where they're at. Like, what happened? Where are they at? Because right now, they are putting horrible numbers on the board. The entire family running the DNC right now, do you think they, or RNC right now, do you think they listen to anyone who doesn't agree with whatever they want to do? Like, I often, I often talk about how Democrats are too cowardly and too consistently uh, focus testing their narrative, and that shows that they have no backbone, right? But Republicans have too much backbone in the wrong direction at this point, and they're not doing enough focus testing to be like, hey, maybe we shouldn't be doing any of the things that we're doing right now you know
Has the old Republican money divested from Trump? No, 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 no. Old Republican money still is very much on. Uh, come on. I mean, Miriam Adelson is like, I will give you billions of dollars if you nuke Gaza and, and permanently annex West Bank and shit. Like, no, that's old money. That's old Republican money. Miriam is carrying the torch for Sheldon, right? Like, that's not, you know, there's still, they still have the same investors. They still have the same donors. Um, they're just picking up more donors from the VC side now. But the thing is, like, I guess you're right. Most of the Republican analysts that, like, gave them major, uh, major victories are now considered to be rhinos and were run out of the party and they just, like, sit on MSNBC and fucking chirp about Trump all day. So I guess that's what they're doing. They're too predisposed with, like, shitting on Donald Trump. They're getting involved with more, more with money than people. Yeah. Last week, this was a critical piece for Vice President Harris to get the endorsement from a party leader who still has influential sway across the entirety of the Democratic Party. Uh, it was. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, it shouldn't be understated the pee. fact that. Uh, this came on uh, several days after her candidacy became official, but also after the official process uh, to clinch those delegates came through. As sources have said that uh, the Obamas didn't want to be seen as anointing uh, Vice President Harris or as seen as part of a coronation in the words of one, uh, choosing instead to wait until after some of those processes has pl have played out. Uh, but certainly it is going to uh, provide uh, quite a bit more momentum for a campaign that has already seen quite a bit of that. $126 million raised as of Tuesday. The campaign has not provided an updated number, even though several days have followed that. And even though several uh, major organizing calls have taken place, including one last night uh, with white women, where 164,000 women participated in that. And Harris is going to be trying to use that momentum across the battlegrounds uh, in the coming days. The campaign saying that just today it will be holding events in Michigan, North Carolina, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, following on uh, dozens of events taking place across other battleground states leading up to this point. Of course, the calendar is very crunched at this point. There are a lot of deadlines coming up in August alone. Uh, we have learned from sources that Vice President Harris and her team are expected uh, to lock in a running mate by August 7th. That would be uh, a process that would be just about two weeks from start to finish. Uh, August 1st is the earliest date that the Rules Committee has decided that early voting could begin. Uh, and then, of course, there is the convention, uh, the 19th through the 22nd, less than a month away at this point. Uh, so certainly there is a lot to do in just the next few weeks, guys. Yeah, not a lot of real estate left on that calendar. Kayla Tashi, great to have you on in the mornings. Thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. With us now, CNN political commentator Kristen Soltis Anderson and Democratic strategist Matt Bennett. And Matt, you the, the facts of this endorsement aside, this sort of caps this week, this remarkable now six days of a pretty tight rollout. How do you see it having played out? I mean, there's no way it could have gone better. It was very clear that the vice president's team was ready. They didn't know if the president would step aside. They had no idea and they didn't know when it would come. But the moment that it came, they just sprang into action and they rolled it out in unbelievably perfect way. They made all the calls. Absolutely. W debates don't matter in a situation where you've like already fucking campaigned. It's literally September. Normally, how, when do debates happen? They happen in the month of September. You've already basically maxed out on your name recognition, right? You have two candidates that are running against one another that everybody has like kind of made up their minds on right in a situation like that yeah it's like in a situation like that it's like yeah you, you've made up your mind on hillary clinton you've made up your mind on donald trump right you think he's like a outside of the box thinker you, you think he's like anti-establishment hillary clinton's pro-establishment yada 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 right but in a situation like this debates do matter this is a debate that does kind of matter because Kamala Harris is a last second swap out. People want to see how their candidate, people in the margins want to see. One, she doesn't have, uh, 
She still has a lot of name recognition to make up for as she was the vice president and was notoriously put on, uh, you know, janitorial staff duty, right? When she was the VP. So she didn't get a lot of play in mainstream media. That is actually kind of beneficial for her in this situation because she didn't get a lot of avenues of attack beyond the fact that she's goofy and laughs a lot. Okay. So now that's actually playing a, a good role for Kamala to reinvent herself when she has a national podium, when she has all of the attention on her. Okay. You can deny debates. You can deny debates if you are already in a, if you're in good standing, if you're like, uh, if you've cleared the table, if you're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to win regardless. Like who gives a fuck? Why would I give my opponent? Why would I give my opponent an opportunity to, uh, to, to potentially get a couple sound bites off of me that will play well. But in this circumstance, because Kamala Harris is untested. Okay. Because Kamala Harris is untested. People will want to see her against Donald Trump. So in this situation, debates do matter a little bit more. Ultimately, door knocking is what matters. Good sound policy is what matters. That's how you win elections. It's not like there's no like world in which you just knock it out of the park in a fucking debate and then, you know, the tides of history change. The only time where debates have been relevant is when they did it in fucking July or June, I guess at this point, super early. And 50 million people saw that the current president running for re-election was genuinely a carcass. He doesn't want to debate her because he doesn't want to give her another possible I'm speaking moment like she had with Pence. It's not even that. Not debating also makes Trump look weak. You just opened up a new line of attack. Oh, dude, you're panicking. You're scared. You're scared. I, what happened? I thought Kamala Harris was goofy and stupid. And only got to this position because she's dumb and, and bloody or whatever the fuck the Republican psychos are saying. You know what happened? It just looks, it just looks bad. And I think part of the calculation here is that like Trump could go, uh, Trump could dagger Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton was not like red as a woman, but instead red as like this almost mythical being that was a perfect singular representation of establishment politics and, and 30 years of conspiracies that were associated with her last name and herself directly, okay? She was more lizard than woman, so Trump could just fucking dunk on her all day. But Trump doing that to Kamala Harris changes the dynamic a, a lot, as a matter of fact, because Kamala Harris is not like Hillary Clinton at all. She does not have any of the baggage that Hillary Clinton has. So in that situation, when Trump is like ripping into her, he's not just ripping into Kamala Harris. He's reminding people what his position is about black women. He's reminding people what his position is about all women in general. That's it can come across as off putting. There's a push and pull with everything that you do in presidential uh, campaigns. You might win more favors with some, uh, you know, non-college educated whites, not men, non-college educated uh, uh, black voters that are men, non-college educated Hispanic voters that are men. But like the margins that you're going to get on that, on that front will not make up for the losses that you also get. The losses that you also incur from the other side. You know what I mean? How do you think Kamala's tough on black people crime will do for Republican messaging? What do you mean tough on black people crime? What about the non-college educated Hassanabi uh, heads? Well, the non-college educated Hassanabi heads, hopefully they got a good job, a good union job, because otherwise they're going to see a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Okay. Here's you saying what the same the thing four years ago. Break? What you could do by subscribing. Wait, I just ran the top of the hour ad break, dude. What the fuck? That's crazy that you just sent me that link right after. Bummer for you. He's just temporarily avoiding debate to discredit her as a legit candidate in the public eye, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I, I think it's not a good idea, though, because, again, it just shows weakness. Uh, anyway, like I said, Hassan Abi heads uh, that are non-college educated, hopefully you guys got good union jobs so you can avoid seeing the ads at the top of the hour when I run the three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you got to do is subscribe for $6 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, or by getting gifted a sub. If you're lucky, here's a three-minute ad break now.
Barack Hussein Obama, and then it goes on dot, 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 dot. They're not going to commit to debates just yet. Of course, Obama then this morning goes out and endorses. But Kristen, explain, what does Trump get out of this? What do they do? They get something out of this process argument? Well, it is not wrong to underscore how extremely unprecedented this is. I mean, Democratic voters did not get the opportunity to really have a meaningful primary. Um, at the same time, though, the politics of this, I, I assume that what they're trying to do is divide a Democratic coalition that right now does not seem interested in being divided. Yeah. But Democrats are pretty united around Harris. This week has been, again, very unprecedented in the extent to which they've closed ranks. I do think that... They're just so used to just uh, making up false narratives that they're literally making up a false narrative about something that is like demonstrable uh, and something that is like easily observable. Like the false narrative in this situation is like, oh man, the Democrats are surely in a state of panic with Kamala. And it's like anybody that pays even a little bit of attention to what's going on is like, no, they're not. Where is the fucking, where's the chaos? They're literally doing victory laps right now. Like, what do you mean? Like, you can do that about, like, immigrant panic or crime, things that are not, like, immediately observable because it requires you to look at, like, data to really parse through the situation, especially when the media is also interested for their own material benefit if it bleeds, it leads, um, and, and run with that narrative over and over again. And you can, and if, and if there's no one on the other side, ideologically, making a counter, okay, if there's no one on the other side making a counter to that and trying to explain trying to explain what the reality is, like they can run the table with that line. They have basically fucking 30 years of nonstop immigrant panic that they can rely on in terms of making this hysterical argument. You can't necessarily do that, though, for something as, as easily observable as like the Democratic Party not being in a state of panic and... and um, Across the table, everyone is, is united behind this singular force now. Republicans would be wise to have a message that's not about process, but is more about policy, to focus their message more on voters' discontentment with the economy, with immigration, with crime, with these issues where voters in polls that I see day in and day out tend to trust Republicans much more than Democrats. The Trump campaign would be much smarter to keep the focus on that versus trying to fight these process wars. So, Matt, on that front, one of the things that we have begun to hear are these attacks on Vice President Harris as a liberal. Tom Conn started it here, calling it a San Francisco liberal like five times in seven minutes. Um, and th this morning, we are seeing for the first time this super PAC, which is now supporting Harris, saying they're coming out with an ad buy, some $50 million they're putting into this ad. I want to play a little bit. She's the district attorney. For the record, this person is like shitting on this Biden press release. Since last year, the value of her labor has increased by 7.3%, a gain outside of observed margin of error. Trump would roll back this historic win for workers dangerously. Harris press release. Look, these guys are all R-worded. Yeah, it's better. It is objectively a better way to fucking campaign than this. Especially when the economy is one of the aspects for the Democrats that is the weakest why would you fucking post this as a criticism why would you post this as a fucking criticism of of uh, kamala harris's is campaign and what their strategy looks like when all you do with <laughs> biden was a biden was fucking unpopular first of all biden was already unpopular and he was especially unpopular when it came to the economy the truth of this does not change the reality it's more that they're weird and it's much better than insulting them with a slur. This is a lack of understanding, to be honest. Hey, exactly. And they are weird. For the record, they are still campaigning on labor gains anyway. It's not like they're not campaigning on that. I can't believe I'm the one saying this because I am the guy who just told you how important it is to talk about kitchen table issues. Okay? But calling the Republican Party weird is basically saying that all they want to talk about is shit that is not kitchen table issues. You're doing that right now. Who protected children from sexual predators. She's the attorney general who stood up to the big banks to protect homeowners. Yeah, so those two things, I wanted to highlight that, Matt, because again, and you got, you spent your career trying to kind of nudge the Democrats or keep them in the center here. How much does Harris have to worry about that? And does this ad get to it? 
Look, the entire ball game here is winning the center, and the Harris team absolutely knows that. This is going to be a sprint to the general election where most voters have made up their minds already. The undecided voters tend to be centrists and moderates and independents. Those are the people that are up for grabs, and those are the people she's got to get. So this is a really good ad to focus on her tough as nails uh, history as a prosecutor, and she's got to make clear to people that that's who she is. It's a very different game than she was in in 2020 in a field of 20 other or 19 other candidates running for a Democratic nomination. This is uh, completely different. And she's got three and a half years in the White House, lots of experience to talk about what they have done together and what she wants to do going forward, making this about the future. And I think she has a real opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, CNN is dumb. The moderate, the moderate middle is a myth. This is from the 2020 election published September 24th, 2019. Moderate voters will decide the election or wait. If Democrats can move to the middle, they'll win in 2020. These tropes conjure up a particular image, a pivotal block of reasonable independent voters stick to the two major parties, just waiting for a centrist candidate to embrace a moderate policy decision. And there's a reason this perception exists. You see just, uh, you see just that if you look at only at top line polling numbers, which shows 40 plus percent of voters refusing to identify with a party or close to 40 percent of voters calling themselves moderates. But top line polling numbers mask an underlying diversity of political thought that is far more complicated. Moderate, independent and undecided voters are not the same. And none of these groups are reliably centrist. They are ideologically diverse. So there is no simple policy solution that will appeal to all of them. To better understand the unbearable incoherence of moderates, independents, and undecideds, let's start by visualizing them. Drawing on data from the Democracy Fund Voter Study Group, a research consortium that works with YouGov to conduct large-scale surveys, I pulled voters who identify as moderate, identify as independent, said they were undecided on how they would vote in a 2020 matchup between President Trump and a generic Democrat. Here's how big each group is in the electorate overall and how much they overlap. The murky middle of the electorate that identify... Despite some overlap among independents, moderates, and undecided voters, each group is uh, relatively distinct. However, this means this doesn't necessarily mean there are cohesive ideological benefits within each group. Okay? To test this, I used policy questions from the same voter study group survey, make two indexes measuring attitudes, um, measuring attitudes oh, fuck, on economic policy and immigration. People say they're moderate, but when it comes to individual policies, they are not moderate at all. Okay, they have very obvious opinions on those matters. No, she didn't pick up anything from Michelle. She's eating the ham horn that I gave her earlier. Are independents also moderates? It's depend it depends on how you define moderate. If you define moderates based on self-identification, the answer is sort of more than half, 58%, or self-identified independents in the voter study group also identify as moderate, compared to 27% who identify as a conservative and just 15% who identify as liberal. But many people who call themselves moderate do not rate as moderate on policy issues, just like self-identified uh, independents. Moderates come from over the all over the ideological space, including moderates who identify as independent. Look at their ideological map. More market-oriented, more anti-immigration, more pro-immigration. These are the moderates. Do you think that being pro-immigration or being anti-immigration puts you uh, firmly in the moderate camp? What I've, what I've recognized in the United States of America, partially a consequence of our duopoly, partially, partially a consequence of the electoral college that makes it seem like your vote doesn't matter, is that there aren't, like, regime defenders, okay? In other countries, whether it's, like, nationalist sentiment, whether it's socialist sentiment, you have, like, people who defend regimes. You have people who defend parties, okay? You have party loyalists. Americans don't necessarily have it as much. While they do still vote along party lines, they still fancy themselves to be independents. They f still fancy themselves to be moderates. This does not mean that they do not have any sort of ideological predisposition. Okay? Anyway, undecided voters are all over the ideological map. That makes more sense. But yeah, the middle of the middle. The ideological position of eligible voters who are identified as moderate, independent, and said they were undecided in the voter study group survey. Should Biden go dark Brandon in his last few months and sign executive orders uh, one after another? What's stopping him? He literally has nothing to lose. Um, I don't think he would do that in a good way. I think he would most likely do that in a bad way if he were to do it. He'd be like, uh, he'd be signing an executive order that ne will never recognize like um, Palestine's existence or some shit. They're far more economically left wing 
which is why the idea that they need to move right is just silly, period. Well, one good thing that I can point to in terms of what Central Committee, Michael from Pennsylvania, is saying is that it seems like even the center-right and, and establishment Democrats, at least those surrounding Biden, recognize that reality, which is why they never fucking tried to pull to the middle. Even in the final moments of desperation, when it seemed like his campaign was falling apart due to the fact that everyone recognized that he was old, he was still going out there and being like, we're going to do rent caps, $55, rent caps at $55, that's right, for everybody. Like, he didn't, he did not push center at all. He did not go right at all. He just stayed on message. That to me shows that at least some of the Democratic Party's analysts now recognize that reality that like left wing economic populism is not it doesn't have that fucking stink on it that the Democrats previously thought it did. They did do that with immigration, which is stupid, but that's because they are not testing a counter narrative and what that would look like if there was a counter narrative on immigration. As the Damn, girl, chill. You're fucking eating that shit so hard. Sneezing and coughing over here. The pod save bros. Damn, Pfeiffer was making the point today that young people they lost weren't necessarily progressive and they should tack to the center to get them back. Yeah, dude, young people want um reasonable, focus-tested uh, tax policies, famously. That's why the most popular... That's why the most popular uh, candidate ever for young people was an 82 year old man who called himself a socialist jd vance ridiculed for accidentally revealing explicit dolphin based search history dan pfeiffer is wrong on that front anyway so this is jd vance trying to address the childless cat lady's remark and calls out anti-family democrats but before we get to that i must remind you of last night's uh harry enton moment okay do i have that here does anyone have that on the docket? I'm not gonna watch Slavoj Zizek. Oh wait, hold on. We'll get to this. We'll get to the Olympic fits in a little bit. Didn't you QRT it? I did QRT it. You're right. I should just pull that up. So here, region. Let's talk about. Let's talk about Jedediah John Don Vance. Okay, a historically bad pick, like genuinely generational talent in generational talent in just like sucking okay sucking fucking couches maybe dolphins it seems but also also just absolutely being a pathetic figure that even people that know him best despise let's take a look he does worse in his home region at minus 16 points than he does in the average of all polls which is a minus five point net <laughs> favorability rating so the people who know him best the region that knows him best they like him even less than America likes him. And of course, as you pointed out, again, in that kind intro, is he has historically unpopular for a VP nominee coming out of his first convention as the VP. Nominee. All right. So let's specifically look at some former Republican vice presidential presidential candidates. What do you see? Yeah. You know, you mentioned Sarah Palin. How about Dan Quayle as well? These are two folks who I think most people remember as not being particularly popular. The amazing thing was coming out of their conventions, they actually were pretty popular. Quayle with a plus 15 point net favorability rating. Sarah Palin with a plus 26 point net favorability rating. Again, Vance at minus five points is just off the charts and falling off the chart in the wrong direction. Not up above the chart, but down below the chart. The <laughs> I mean, that's like, once again, um, vindication for the Bergamaniacs. That's number one. Number two, Bergamaniacs, we could have had it all. Okay, we could have had it all. But number two, this is what happens when you listen to Donald Trump Jr. on who should be your vice presidential uh, candidate. And last but not least, this is what happens when you go for a guy who is a so far one term senator in Ohio, a state that you already won by eight points, who literally won his senatorial seat with a smaller margin than you did, as in he's less popular than you in this already red state. And there was another Republican, the governor of Ohio, on that very same ballot that J.D. Vance was on that outperformed J.D. Vance by like 20 fucking points. That is insane. Mike DeWine, 
who is obviously like a, a little bit more moderate on a lot of issues that matter to Ohioans. And that happens. You got like, uh, you know, you'll have like sometimes a red governor in a red state that is not as red in his, in his policies uh, that picks up a lot of votes for him and Democrats and stuff. But like Mike DeWine was outperforming Jedediah Vance by fucking 20 points, dude. That is insane that you did this. Like, it just makes Are no sense. Are you a racist? How could you, also, how could you, how could you not want this guy as your VP? This is what he ran on. Are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? The media calls us racist for wanting to build Trump's wall. They censor us, but it doesn't change the truth. Joe Biden's open border is killing Ohioans, with more illegal drugs and more Democrat voters pouring into this country. This issue is personal. I nearly lost my mother to the poison coming across our border. No child should grow up an orphan. I'm JD Vance, and I approve this message because whatever they call us, we will put America. I love I love this on so many fronts because like he wasn't even orphaned. He's like he's acting like his mother died. Like no, nah, she didn't die actually. And also, she didn't get the the fentanyl from undocumented migrants. Undocumented migrants play no role whatsoever on the trafficking of fentanyl, according to the Department of Homeland Security uh, numbers. Ninety percent are uh, ninety percent of the drugs apprehended over the border are coming in through regular por points of entry, and ninety one percent of those apprehensions are conducted on American citizens. That's right. Not like actual card carrying American citizens, not undocumented migrants at all. Uh, JD Vance's mother also was a nurse who was stealing uh, prescription opioids from her own patients. So she had nothing to do with uh, undocumented migrants whatsoever. Anyway, now having said that, having said that, great campaign ad. I don't know how that guy. I don't know I don't know how that guy underperformed the fucking Republican governor by 20 goddamn points. Uh, but also, as you guys know, it was partially because Donald Trump, the fucking dumbass, uh, too comfortable thinking he's going to bully an old man who was already like deeply unpopular. Listen to his dumbass son, Don Jr. Here is Don Jr. trying to defend uh, the, the J.D. Vance situation. Like there's some of them are like, we don't even want white women. Like it doesn't like, we need to check like three or four boxes. So you can end up with like, if you're like, you know, a trans communist, this, that, and the other, like you too can be the CEO of a fortune 500 company with no experience whatsoever. Like, he's actually spent real time with them. Like any sort of, I would say he's the blue collar yes. billionaire. And 15 years ago, when I said it, people used to sh Dude, just show this over and over again. Show this in Ohio and Trump will turn Ohio fucking blue. Okay. Like, ain't nobody is looking at this and going, yeah, no, this is, this is a winning ticket. Like, no Riz. When I say they're weird, this is what I mean, bro. They are fucking gross. They are so gross that it's getting to a point where even other equally gross voters are like, oh, God, I don't want to be associated with that. Shit all over me. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you don't understand. And now they understand. But the borders are wrote the article. It Absolutely. wasn't even like it was the same publication. It was the same journalist. I'm like, this you? Like, because <laughs> to literally save yeah. democracy, because it's literally at risk, JD. That's I, why I keep yes. the notion that, you know, democracy is all things, but it's, if, we, if the elite, meaning... You know, Barack Obama, the Clintons, a couple billionaire donors be like, okay, this isn't working. We're going to take everything we gave you. We didn't give you any other options. We threw, you know, RFK off the ticket. Yep. We basically tried to push anyone else from ever happening. So we gave you your only choice. You actually then chose that person. And now America is not there. Now they're pretending, no, no, she's a moderate. They did the same thing with Joe Biden. He's going to be so moderate. He's so moderate. Look, he's moderate. Yeah. The policies were not. Yes. I hate to say it, but like literally, they don't like, but it's like me, a couple other people that are, we're friends with that are like, hey guys, here are the facts, but you're not going to get that. Even, honestly, you may not get that on. Yeah, they're besties. They love each other. You could tell, bro. Look at them. They're having so much fun together. Not a care in the world. You know what I mean? That like, seems like it should be illegal I am reasonably to me. Yeah. fast. If you see me on Twitter, like, I'll, I'll get out a mean tweet in seconds. Right. No, I'll get out a meme tweet in seconds, dude. Sick. Yeah. No, that's what... That's what, like, a guy with an HVAC business is thinking about. Is like... I know I make jokes a lot, but, like... Dude, think about it. 
think about like an average American Republican, okay? Like maybe a lot of you are probably living in blue states, so you see exactly this type of Republican because deep blue districts, Republicans are exactly like this, the Groiper Republicans. But just like try to imagine, I don't know, someone's, let's try to imagine like your friend's dad or some shit who maybe owns like a catering business, right? Like living in, I don't know, living in Oklahoma or a guy who owns a ranch or some shit living in Texas. Like, I don't think that guy looks at this and goes, yeah, this is a great, this is a winning message. Oh, this guy tweets really fast. I love that. Okay. <laughs> I love how fast he tweets. Glenn Youngkin, dude, he was right there. He was right there. Fuck it. Bergam was right there. Like, it's just so dumb. I don't think I'm going through a checkout process 7,000 times or whatever the statistic, and it's over and over again. I mean, even if they're, you know, journey, very average at best at what they're doing, of course. they thought of themselves as the elites, and yet no, none of fact, these guys the are AI, exactly, they, do, they all copy everyone. The Marines <laughs> thing, I'll sit it behind a desk for a year or two, you know, af after I do all the other things because I want to get into politics. You did it first. Yeah, dude, like, just this coked out rant about fucking tweeting really fast. Sick, man. Yeah, these guys are, the. <laughs> that's the guy. That's the guy that Trump is listening to. Democratic Party ousts anyway, President. Anyway, here's, uh, here's uh, John Don talking to fucking Megyn Kelly about the childless cat ladies remark. I got to pee Joe again. Biden and elevates Vice President Kamala Harris to the top again. of its ticket without a single vote having been cast for her in that role. Uh, in just a matter of hours, the media suddenly turning all of its focus seemingly to Senator J.D. Vance, Trump's running mate. Donald Trump's uh, number two coming under intense criticism for comments he made three years ago about, quote, childless cat ladies, because this is what Americans who can't pay their mortgages care about. Senator Vance is here to respond to this controversy, but first we want to start by walking you through how it all began. Going back now to July 2021, Mr. Vance had just launched his campaign for senator uh, in the great state of Ohio, and he gave a speech to a conservative organization called the Intercollegiate Studies Institute. This was a speech essentially about declining birth rates, and they're bad, by the way, in the United States. They've, they're at a 17-year low, and they continue to go in the wrong direction, and what it means for the future of this country. Mr. Vance talked about how he wanted to see the Republican Party as a pro-family party. He discussed the importance of children and brought up the fact that many top Democratic leaders don't have any kids, questioning what kind of a message the party as a whole is sending to young Americans. Take a listen. I want to take aim at the left, specifically the childless left, because I think the rejection of the American family is perhaps the most pernicious and most evil thing that the left has done in this country. Consider all of the next gen of the Democrat Party. See, they're they're doing it again, by the way. It's like you're supposed to just say they don't respect family values and then let people make inferences off of that, which can mean anything. It can mean that they don't like gay people. It's like, oh, they want to trans the children. That's all you need to say. They don't care about family values. That is a message that resonates with normal Americans to a certain degree. When you dive into it and get real fucking nerdy with it and you start talking about like, yeah, they don't care about family values, which when I say that, I mean like you need to strap up every woman with, that is capable of carrying a pregnancy to term to a baby incubation machine all of a sudden you're losing all those people who are like, whoa, 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 I just meant like family values. I thought... I thought we were talking about like fuck gay people or I thought we were talking about, you know, making sure that America had strong traditional values. Like you, you literally give the fucking game away. It is the exact opposite of the Lee Atwater strategy. The famous Lee Atwater strategy of like, you know, post civil rights movement, you can't say the N word anymore. So you say welfare Queens, right? Like you, they forgot that you need the dog whistle. And that's partially on Trump because Trump literally took the dog whistles and just turned them into bullhorns. So these guys think they can get away with it, but their instinct is so nerdy 
that they have to turn this into like some kind of scientific racism, right? That's the problem. They just don't, they forgot that you just say they don't care about family values. And then Democrats try to interrogate that. And then you go, why are you asking me these questions? I just mean family values. Like you're supposed to stand on it and just like give a wink and a nod. You don't, yeah, McKinsey moment is right. He's like, he's talking like a goddamn consultant. We need to eliminate redundancies type shit. Not nerdy, their instinct is liberal. Exactly. Names are obvious. They're well-known people. Kamala Harris, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who's now the Secretary of Transportation, Cory Booker, AOC. Think all these people. They're different. They come from different walks of life, different parts of the country. What is the one thing that unites every single one of them? Not a single one of them has any children. Look, a lot of people are unable to have kids for very complicated and important reasons. Uh, there are people, of course, for biological reasons, medical reasons, that can't have children. The target of these remarks is not them. It's important to, to point that out. It is one thing to recognize that there are people who don't have children. It's one thing to recognize that there are people who don't have children through no fault or choice of their own. But it's something else to build a political movement invested theoretically in the future of this country when not a single one of them actually has any physical commitment to the future of this country. Kids are the ultimate way that we find healthy people, at least I think self-meaning in life. We should treat this as a crisis in this country. And we should send the signal to the culture that we are the pro-family party and we're gonna back it up with real policy. Oh, you know what's crazy? Um I, I don't know about Megyn Kelly, but you know who has foster children and no children, no biological children of her own? Laura Ingram. Like, that's how close to the chest this shit is. Okay? There are so many Americans. There are so many Americans who are foster parents. So many Americans who are step parents. So many Americans who don't have biological children of their own. And this kind of argumentation just weirdly causes people like even Laura Ingram to catch a stray. This is not Laura Ingram. This is Megyn Kelly. Okay. Just letting you know, you know, don't mix up your blonde Republican commentators. Okay. Now, because Mr. Vance named names in his speech, it caused some headlines at the time, uh, mainly because Vice President Harris is not a mother of her own biological children, but she's a stepmother. At the same time, Secretary Buttigieg did not have any children, but about a month later, he adopted twin babies. So a few days after those remarks, back in 2021, Mr. Vance went on Tucker Carlson's show on Fox to address some of the blowback. And that's when he made the comments about the childless cat ladies. Watch. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. Well, the Harris team recirculated the comments this week, leading Democrats and the media, the same media currently rewrite. You know, when I get like, you know, when I get mad at rad libs, for like leaning into the cartoonish depiction of like liberalism and, and the way that Republicans try to portray the entirety of the left as like hysterical, emotional, and, and, you know, incredibly moralistic, uh, woke scolds. Like there's no reason to fucking lean into that message and become that thing that people try to portray you as this is the Republican version of that. Okay, Democrats, not usually, but at least like as a whole, broadly, try to portray Republicans as these like bloodless sociopathic weirdos who are trying to do Handmaiden's Tale. Handmaiden's Tale is basically like the most common meta, right? Whenever talking about the Republican Party, especially post Roe v. Wade or Handmaid's Tale, not Handmaiden. I don't know what the fuck is called. I didn't watch it. Okay, why would you? literally voluntarily put yourself out there okay and be like no i do want to do handmaid's tale it's a book or i it's okay fucking it's a book it's a tv show i didn't watch either i didn't read it shut up my point is in popular culture democrats will always post those fucking images to be like this is what the future republicans want it's ironic that jd vance was like no that is the future that we want and here's how we get there 
I'm like, that's so stupid. What a stupid thing to do. What an objectively dumb thing to do. Why would you voluntarily posture from an objectively unpopular position that your opponent is constantly trying to portray you as? Writing history to tell us Kamala Harris was never the border czar to immediately pile on, on cue. On Tuesday, Hillary Clinton shared it on X and sarcastically wrote, what a normal, relatable guy who certainly doesn't hate women having freedoms. Literally, your husband has been accused of repeated sexual assaults. So take a seat, madam. On Wednesday, actress Jennifer Aniston weighed in, writing, I truly can't believe this is coming from a potential VP of the United States and urged Senator Vance to think about his own daughter, hoping that she might never need IVF, which she accused Mr. Vance of being against, which, as we pointed out yesterday, is not true. And it did not end there. Watch. How dare you? You never. Wait, am I crazy or didn't didn't Megyn Kelly literally leave Fox because of sexual assault and like routine harassment? Am I crazy or is that like one of the other? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. The new film Bombshell, which has recently snagged two Golden Globe and four SAG Awards nominations, tells the true story of the sexual harassment scandal that took down Roger Ailes, the head of Fox News and a kingmaker in the Republican Party. Ailes was an imposing personality. 2016 sexual harassment lawsuit brought against Ailes by former journalist Gretchen Carlson kickstarted an internal investigation at the news network and eventually a wave of sexual harassment claims against Ailes. Megyn Kelly at the time, the rising star of the network, was among the women to report experiencing harassment at the hands of the network in total. In total, more than 20 women accused Ailes and he was forced to resign from his position in July that uh, year. He died later at 77, a year later. Why is that a no? Was she wasn't saying sexual assault is good or something. No, she's literally talking about, she's personally talking about defending the Republican Party on women's rights issues. What do you mean? You think that this like is not contextually important? Do you think that this is not like, do you think that this doesn't play a role? Like you think that that, like if you're running around defending the Republican Party specifically on the issue of like women's reproductive rights or any kind of women's rights issues. If you're trying to re defend the Republican position, okay, telling a woman to shut the fuck up about JD Vance because of her, because of her husband. Okay. Like I, I hate Hillary Clinton too, but she literally told Hillary Clinton to shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up and dribble <laughs> because, because of her husband. And she's like, that's kind of a weird position to, to land on considering that you literally left Fox news because you were, you know, a victim to sexual harassment. Don't you think that that's important to bring up in this situation? I never had a baby. <laughs> Your wife it's weird to do, to run cover for the ideology that has personally harmed you. I've had a baby. You know who else didn't have kids? George Washington, mm -hmm. the father of our nation. Yeah. Like Lord. Kamala, he raised, <laughs> Martha's mm -hmm. children because they invalidate even the idea of women who use IVF to get pregnant or women who don't have children or women who are stepmoms like none of those are valid women to them those women don't matter they're trying to reinforce this message that the only valid version of America is the America where white women didn't leave the home oh, you make me childless uh, I want to no. qualify he is falling into the line of Donald Trump, offending women, offending minorities. So if you have stepkids, J.D. Vance is saying that you should not have as many rights as everybody else. Like this is a person, him and, and the, the former president, they want to control women. Jesus did not have children, right? Joining me now, GOP vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance. J.D., Senator, welcome back to the show. It's great to see you. Good to see you, Megan. Thank you. So Jesus didn't have kids, therefore, you are wrong. What, what, what were you trying to say? <laughs> I guess they're comparing Kamala Harris to Jesus. I don't know. That doesn't make a ton of sense to me, Megan. But look, I know the media wants to attack me and wants me to back down on this, Megan. But the simple point that I made is that having children, becoming a father, becoming a mother, I really do think it changes your perspective in a pretty profound way. This is something, of course, we've recognized for hundreds of years in this country that human civilization has always recognized. But there's a deeper point here, uh, Megan. It's not a criticism of people who don't have children. I explicitly said in my remarks, despite the fact the media has lied about this, 
that this is not about criticizing people who, for various reasons, didn't have kids. This is about criticizing the Democratic Party for becoming anti-family and anti-child. We have to ask ourselves, Megan, why do we have masking of toddlers years after the pandemic ended? Why do we have the Harris campaign coming out this very morning, Megan? Yeah, no, this is this is good narrative, man. Yeah, no, let's talk about a policy issue that was at the forefront of the Republican agenda in fucking 2020, dude. Like, it's 2024, man. Like, what child is being forcibly masked? Like, being anti-masking in 2024 is a wild, wild position. Demonstrating the, the best instincts, uh, personally, I, I think... Demonstrating the best possible uh, campaigning strategy here. And, and saying that we should not have the child tax credit, which lowers tax rates for parents of young children. It's because they have become anti-family and anti-kid. And I'm proud to stand up for parents. And I hope that parents out there recognize that I'm a guy who wants to fight for you. I want to fight for your interests. Yeah, no, that's definitely how you came across as. Also, wait, is he saying he's pro child tax credits? Wait, what? Has lied about this, that this is not about criticizing people who, for various reasons, didn't have kids. This is about criticizing the Democratic Party for becoming anti family and anti child. We have to ask ourselves, Megan, why do we have masking of toddlers years after the pandemic ended? Why do we have the Harris campaign coming out this very morning, Megan, and saying that we should not have the child tax credit, which. Wait, what? Wait, why is he saying that the Democratic Party is 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 that even true? Wait, what? That's just a just a genuine lie, right? What the fuck? Yeah, Axios on Harris's agenda: two trillion for universal pre-K education, elderly care, and child care improvements. Wants to raise the corporate tax rate. Revival of child credit, uh, child tax credit expansion, based on her efforts in the administration and the Senate. And the guy who's saying that right now has said two different things. One, I believe he voted against it. And two, not only did he not only did he fucking vote against it, if I'm not mistaken, I gotta look it up. Hold on. The expansion of child tax credits. But also, but also he has literally said things such as he said things such as like universal pre-K is weird. Like that's just like an like universal pre-K is like a like a bad idea. And it's like um yeah, here it is. Good news, child tax credit. Credit bill is headed to the Senate while POTUS and I continue to fight for the full expanded child tax credit. This bill should be passed quickly. President Biden is ready to sign it into law. That was in February. Okay. Like that would be very odd if she is against child tax credits when she's advocated for it. Harris campaign came out against taxes for Americans with children. Remember this in November. Is this like the new meta? Is that the new meta is just like to lie about it or something and to be like, no, we like the child tax credits. Wait, that's sick. The new meta is just like making shit up. I mean, I'm I'm with it because this means that they are on board with the child tax credit. I mean, it's not the new meta, it's the old meta, but like making stuff up like this. Chat, this literally is like saying the Democratic Party just came out with further restrictions on abortion. Hello? This is literally like this is not something you can lie about in this regard. You can't you can't lie about this because it's just like there's so much there's so like the media will pick this up and immediately be like this is the dumbest thing that they could have ever said and it also makes them seem like they're on board with the expansion of child tax credits which as, a, as far as a policy prescription goes is a democratic party policy that the republicans voted against yeah just the easiest solution in this circumstance, the easiest solution in this circumstance, it, it's an article frame, framing poorly from Daily Caller. Harris campaign staffer appears to come out against child tax credit. This is what they're running on? A high-ranking Harris campaign staffer called giving people with ch children a tax break vile on social media. Wait, what? J.D. Vance's attacks on childless Americans is vile. He called for a higher tax. He called for higher taxes on those without children. That's what they're trying to fucking frame this? That's it? That's what this is? Oh, they're fucking aw they're awesome. They're awesome. This is amazing. Hey guys, on life support, Senate Republicans are prepared to sink the child tax credit bill. A $78 billion package of tax breaks for families and businesses passed in the House with an overwhelming bipartisan vote. But key GOP senators demand big changes or else. And I'm not if I'm not mistaken, one of those senators was Vance. No?
Wasn't JD Vance one of the people? Or maybe he was. Uh, he supports it per roll call. Okay, never mind. GOP vice presidential pick has diverse record on tax spending according to roll call, mass mandate, diversity initiatives, campus protests, tax bills. Um, okay, three tax bills, impose higher taxes on college, university endowments, uh, tax legislation. Vance also co sponsored a bill introduced. Um, would disqualify auto manufacturers, co sponsored a measure with White House that would eliminate the ability for shareholders to delay. Vance also supported traditional business friendly Maggie Hassan, restore full upfront deductions and find in investments in R&D. Where's the child tax credit? Further ado, joining us now, Marine. Vance among the growing group of Republicans who support expanding the child tax credit, which proves, which provides money to low and middle. Okay, I was wrong. He did not. He didn't do that uh, poison pill shit. After Trump expanded the child tax credit, the passage of Tax Cuts and Jobs Act 2017 families are now eligible for up to $2,000. In 2021, he tooted his support for a proposal that would give 12,000 tax credit to married parents who have children under the age of 13. <laughs> married parents. A lot of good ideas out there on how to directly help parents. Instead of giving them only one option, this is, the, this is a good one he wrote. The Maggie Hassan part of the bottom of the article. Hassan's bill incorporated $79 billion tax package negotiated by uh, Ron Wyden. House Ways and Means Chairman Jason Smith, who grew up in a poor family receiving government assistance, spoken positively about the elements of the Wyden Smith bill, which includes an expansion of child tax credits for low income households. The bill faces opposition from Senate Republican leaders who believe it would reduce incentives to work. Yeah. This is such a wild fucking way to swing. And it's it's such it's such a it's such a dumb way because it's on it's literally on the Republican Party that this didn't pass. So for him to turn around and be like, oh, it's the Democrats that don't actually want this is so funny. I, I don't think it'll work. Like, there's no way the media would let, especially because the blood is in the water and there's a feeding frenzy going on with respect to J.D. Vance's imaginably unpopular positions and his uh, underwater approval rating. I think that, the, that there will be an immediate fucking backlash to this kind of thing. I don't think that they let this, uh, they let this go. Underwater, like his position on fucking dolphins? Yes. I think it's only right the major media start heavily reporting on the factual fucking of couches. Are these... CDC being a reduction in taxes for those with children versus increasing taxes on those without children are two different things. He's only supported the latter. Yeah, I don't think that J.D. Vance wants an expansion of child tax credits. I think he wants to tax people without children more. Which, by the way, here's his take on the matter. This is pretty funny, trying to play fast and loose with this, by the way. Because it has even led... It, it has even left people like... Barstool's very own El Presidente to go, what the fuck are you saying? Simple, and I'll go back to something I said earlier about we need to reward the things that we think are good and punish the things that we think are bad. So you talk about tax policy. Let's tax the things that are bad and not tax the things that are good. If you're making $100,000, $400,000 a year, and you've got three kids, you should pay a different lower tax rate than if you're making the same amount of money and you don't have any kids. It's that simple. I you know, totally we, agree. We, we, we yeah, go back here, to something I said earlier about the things that are here. This is fucking idiotic. You want me to pay more taxes to take care of other people's kids? We sure this dude is a Republican? Sounds like a moron. If you can't afford a big family, don't have a ton of kids. Now, obviously, this is a very reactionary way to look at what J.D. Vance is saying. But fuck it, I'll allow it. Americans are so goddamn brain broken in terms of, like, additional taxes. But like trying to do it, okay, guys, chill out. Trying to, trying to advocate J.D. Vance's attacks on childless Americans is even vile. He called for higher taxes on those without children. You, this is exactly like the child tax rate of J.D. Vance. Actually, you get less money if you're a single parent. Also, Vance opposed the American Rescue Plan, which expanded the child tax credit. Yeah. He voiced support for the Missouri Senator Josh Hawley's 2021 plan to expand the child tax credit, which included a marriage bonus and catered to two-parent single-income households. Millions of working people want to start a family and would like to care for their children at home, but current policies do not respect these preferences, Hawley said when the bill was introduced. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but childless Americans already pay higher taxes 
than Americans with children. You want to know why? Because you don't have fucking dependents. So what he's talking about is like literally trying to just simply fucking tax people without children even more than that exclusively to i guess like in his mind he thinks that this will create a this will create a structure where people literally um people will get married more yeah the child tax credit without any sort of additional uh the child tax credit without any additional like uh qualifiers simply just cuts child poverty in america by half which it did by the way um harris said at a political event in north carolina last week this was real this was a real thing it was ridiculous that it didn't fucking uh they didn't expand on it or didn't continue it or couldn't continue on it partially because of the republican party biden's fiscal year 2025 budget aimed to restore the 2021 child tax credit increase and house lawmakers in january passed the bipartisan tax package which included a child tax credit expansion however the bill's been stuck in senate the enhanced tax break is a huge priority for Democrats, said Garrett Watson, senior policy analyst and modeling manager at Tax Foundation. Do you think tax credits for children are bad? No. What? No. There's only one way to offer money to Americans, and that's by functionally cutting taxes or offering tax credits. It just sucks that that is the reality. But I never said that. I said the exact opposite. Oh, I thought this guy was going to try to do a three-minute ad break debate. By being like, well, you never said that there will be a three minute ad break at the top of the hour, but there is one unless you subscribe for $5 or for free. That would have been a better opportunity for you, sir, even though you didn't take that opportunity. You know, here's a three minute ad break now, by the way, everybody. Now, if you want to break from that, you can use a Twitch Prime. It's kind of like a tax credit. Okay. As long as you have an Amazon Prime account that you haven't, that you haven't used on your favorite broadcaster. And you can use it here, or you can get gifted a sub. It's kind of like socialism that way. Here's the three minute ad break now. What? Missing the biggest moment of your wife's career because you're busy queening out with WeHo gays, Lemma Fail. And Mob also told the story about being caught by surprise. Oh my God. Oh my God. When he said it, he happened to be in Los Angeles with a gay couple, friends of his, after taking a one hour soul cycle class with them in West Hollywood. We're out there having coffee, messing around and talking, messing around. Douglas M. Hoff is gay. But that's, you know, that's neither here nor there, okay? So now it's like after the announcement has gone out, my friend's partner said, um, you need to look at this. And I said, what? What the friend was holding up was Biden's letter to the country announcing he was dropping out. Of course, I didn't have my phone. So I ran and ran and got into our car. And of course, my phone is just on fire. And it's basically call Kamala, call Kamala, call Kamala from everyone. Emhoff said. And of course, the first thing she said was, where the were you? I need you. Where the fuck were you? I need you. Once again, Haas with the buy erasure. True. How aggressive is the sex Paulo, Pelosi, and Doug have? Oh, you mean David the PP? Why are we pretending like he didn't speak to Kamala to tell her he was dropping out beforehand? Hello? Have you seen Biden? I don't think he told Kamala Harris beforehand that he was dropping out. Like, maybe moments before. Maybe literally moments before the tweet was uh, dropped on the timeline. Brother, there was like eight people in total in the country that knew he was dropping out he told his staffers he told his staffers the night before that they're full steam ahead captain okay new york times reported he told kamala that morning yeah see no after the letter was released he was pissed yeah i thought i heard a psa guy say biden informed his staff one minute prior to posting the tweet that's what they want you to think no i believe that i 100 percent believe that Half of his re-election campaign staff found out from the tweet, brother. You're crazy. Morning, Rebecca. Vice President Kamala Harris is racing to rally support across the country. With the election now just 100 days away, she is aggressively going after Donald Trump and hitting that campaign trail. Hi. Hey there. This morning, Vice President Kamala Harris getting a major endorsement and revving up her campaign. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder. Okay, we saw all this stuff. Rallying one of the nation's largest teachers unions in Houston, Texas. Bro, you can't be rallying one of the uh, largest teachers unions in the nation and then simultaneously go with Josh Shapiro. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, you can't do both. Damn, this guy's good.